Hi everyone, I'm George Cow, and I'm here today with one of my clients and, and the members of my Master Heart Group Coaching Program. Her name is Maxine Shapiro, and she's going to be sharing with you some of the lessons she's learned as she's built up her coaching business. And um, I'm excited to share her wisdom with you. Hi, Maxine. Hi, George. How are you today? Great. Thanks for being here. Thanks for doing this. So let me first read your bio so that the audience can have some sense of what you do. And then we'll go into some of the lessons you've learned as you've grown your business and, um, you know, what you can share with us about improvisation. So um, let me, the bio, uh, here it is. I'm just going to read it for, for folks here. Mixing laughter with learning and using one of the most exhilarating forces in business today, improvisation, Maxine transforms any meeting or conference workshop or, or workshop into a playground of quick, productive, and fun collaborations through generous, respectful communication while, being, uh, while creating big, bold solutions with enthusiasm for implementation and translates it into any industry. Now, that definitely reads better in writing. <laughs> but, uh, but no, this, I, think, I think folks get an idea. So let me finish up here. As a coach, Maxine takes the same passion, wisdom, and wit to help transform individuals to be their best self, to dream bigger and bolder with results far beyond the client's imagination. So Maxine, yeah. both a speaker facilitator as well as a, a coach, works with um, organizations, uh, events, as well as one-to-one -one with individuals. So welcome, Maxine. Good to have you here. Thank you, George. Now, one of the things that um, we were talking about before, before we started recording is one of the lessons is how, um, you know, in business, usually people are fixated on a prize, keep their eyes on the prize. You know, if I, when I do this, I'll then be able to have this. And that's what I'm really after. You know, when I, then I'll feel, then I'll be successful then I'll feel successful. But, but you have a different take on that. I mean, and maybe you've experienced some of that yourself and maybe it hasn't worked as well. I don't know. Maybe you could share, share your, your thoughts on this, this particular idea. Yeah. Thank you, George. I'd love to, uh, because that was, you know, when uh, I want to tell you, know, you, you had me ponder some things and, and one of them, what, what were the lessons that I've learned in, in business? And it's, it, it's a challenge to not um, make it about, and I'm just going to say the money. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to say that. You know, we, one of the lessons was, is that, you know, um, it's usually, you know, when I earn this, then I can feel successful. So, you know, well, how are you doing in your business? You know, why don't you ask me, who did I help today? You know, um, you know, we live in, in a, in a wonderfully capitalistic society and I love it. I love it. I wouldn't be here and I would love to be able um, and to have that opportunity of prosperity and abundance. And sometimes I've had to redefine prosperity and abundance. You know, I'd like to say that man, 12 years ago when I started this, it was uphill just like that. You know, it wasn't. And yet I can't, and this is what I very important when I work with my clients that, you know, if I am going, if my mood or my um, trust in my abilities and my confidence and, and my talents and skills are based on what's in my bank, you know, you're just going to have to wait to see that, you know, is what I could have said many times. So I had to learn and to, to just not make it about, you know, the when I get this, I will do that. So that whole keep your eye on the prize. And so it was fun looking back. And what I have learned, it's really about the present. And I have a reminder on my phone, who can I serve powerfully today? Who is right in front of me? You know, it may be, you know, the clerk at Whole Foods. It, mm -hmm. Maybe um, the you know I, I LA now has a has a rapid transit you know I'm from Chicago originally and maybe the person sitting next to me 
You know, can I smile instead of just sit down and put this wall? I'm not saying, well, tell me, how was your day today? Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, I said, next to somebody who had a dog. Anyway, it's, um, and I, I have no, this is typical, this is a lot of mixing. Where is I going with this? Um, but who's in front of me, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that has helped my business so much because I cannot tell you how many people, I, I was surprised at how I went, may I coach you around that? Um, or you're, yeah, you know, I asked for permission first or, you know, and, and something happens. So it is about staying present. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we hear it a lot and yet, no, no, no. But for this case, I really got to keep my eye on the goal. You know, for me, my goal has been, you know, like this. So mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. It's absolutely, sure. I don't think we can hear that encouragement enough to stay present because everything around us is asking us to focus on goals uh, and, and results and everything. And, and yes, and I found for myself when I am able to bring my values and practice virtue in the process of whatever I'm doing, the results tend to take care of themselves. Yes. The results take care of me anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, yes, go ahead. No, I, you know, uh, it, it's, it's at the end of the day, you know, I ask myself, you know, did you do, did you serve somebody powerfully? Um, where could you have done better? And, you know, sometimes it's like, I didn't do anything. Uh, and, and I have to let myself off the hook. You know, we get so hard on ourselves as business owners because it's our business. And, you know, the same thing that we left big business for, if I may say, you know, so there wasn't somebody going, did you get that done and told the bar and looked at, you know, we do it to ourselves. Um, and I do. Uh, sometimes and I'm, I'm, I've come such a long way and that's why I love working with people you know be it an executive or business owner around that issue mm. and how we get to lighten up on ourselves that's yeah. all absolutely one of the other lessons you've learned is continuing to return to the value that you provide for pe for clients or people mm -hmm. um, tell us how you do that Mm. Uh, well, there's a couple of different ways I do it. One, I make sure, let's say there's a bit of, oh, I can't call that, you know, there, there may be a company or a person. And I will tell you that I, I've been writing letters to people that I want to coach. I'm talking people, you know, and, um, uh, and I go, who do you think you are wanting to coach so-and-so? Um, and so I, I have to keep a list of things handy for me. So as soon as that doubt comes in, which is fear, and fear we know, you know, it, it's fight or flight. And, um, and so I, I actually have a demo video. And you know, I'll just put that on and go, oh, that's right. I do do that well, don't I? <laughs> People liked when I did that. You know, gonna, I look up some few testimonials, you know, and then I go, yeah, yeah. And then I, I also know the value I bring. Um, well, how can I say this? By, by writing it down sometimes. And this is not an ego. It, it, it's different than... Let me tell you how great I am. It's what everyone has value. Everybody. And, and value far, far beyond you even thought you had. And, you know, sometimes when things come easy, when I'm working with clients, the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, they, and, and I do this with organizations as well, when they, it comes too easy to them, they don't see it as a value that they're bringing, you know. And... And it's like, just because it came easy to you, look at how people are reacting to that, to that skill, to that talent, um, to that wisdom that you just go, oh, it's nothing because it's always been part of me, you know? And yeah, we get to really identify those so that it's, um, 
there's there's the person no one likes to play golf with somebody that man throws that cup club down you know man i suck at this i stink i should now look at that i did who wants to play with someone like that on the other hand you know you still don't want someone to go well how just let's just play i want to see you win you know there's that balance and we're never in balance but balance is is really important so i'm saying this you know when I'm, we're talking about when we do that that self-reflection of what our value is and the benefit that we bring to to anybody that's in front of us um and it is so important and what i've i've i teach my clients a lot is know it and trust that it's in your back pocket it's like george and i when you and i started talking i said you know i'm not going to use notes and then i went yes i should i should use my notes and then there's a point where you just trust you know what's inside and now you get to just be present to what's in front of you and be passionately curious i just i love my curiosity i love that i just you know i just that's it and watch what happens that's all mm, beautiful thank you i absolutely agree so um we just have a couple minutes i want to wrap this up with oh having gosh. you share a little bit about the framework you created it's called collaborate and you could tell us what that means sure and maybe give us one tip from it maybe there's one one insight from that I love to. A lot of what I've been saying has been that. Um, and it's like, it sure doesn't sound like it, but that's it. It's messy. You know, we, none of us want to create messy, but it's wonderful when it happens. Um, if OER is curious. So collaborate, collaborate, communicate, create big, bold solutions. And, you know, bold is defined too differently. It could just be, you know, one, one step above, and that's bold for a lot of people. So what is it that, that I do? Um, again, as you said in, in my bio, I, I use the application of improvisation. And what does that mean? It means that, that I'm gonna put you through an exercise where you're gonna get to experience your own agility. And, what we create, you know, it's like going to a gym and, and, and George, I can see by your physique, you, you probably work out, you know, we're very mindful when we work out and we lift things that are, are heavier than what we normally would so that when we're out in the world, you know, and something's about to fall, we've got the strength to, to pick it up or hold it or whatever it is. And, and same with these workshops and um, the whole form of collaborate is I exaggerate things so that we can we can really go out there now and be agile, really trust that creativity that, that, that we have, but that we're so scared to, to say out loud. So what I do, I'll, my stopwatch is the most important thing in my workshops and I'm learning in my life um, so that I don't edit my ideas. I believe that what's most important is that we put all our ideas out on the table and and this could be our wisdom our our what we want to do for the day you know a project um and and we don't edit it it's pen to paper it's bleh, and when i do this with an organization i go you are allowed to say something and not be married to it in a minute you can go you know what? i don't like that idea but that's okay just get it out there. So it's about separating the idea process from the evaluation process. So in improv, one of the most important phrases that, that most people know now, and I'm just thrilled to see how it's taken off, is yes and. You know, By you stating this one idea that you have, you're allowing me to yes and it. So it may not be your idea that gets implemented, but will, what will happen is somebody else will be triggered with that. So I'm saying that by you holding back your ideas, you're stifling productivity. You're, you're, you're stifling progress. 
because you never know by what you say what somebody else can yes and. I love that. So it's really about, once again, separating the idea process from the evaluation process. So, you know, you get the boss that goes, now, you know, we tried that last year, you know, give me another idea. Well, sorry, you just shut me down. You're not getting another idea. Yeah. So it's really, and then we do this with ourselves too. So that's the thing. A lot of those who are watching this are trying to create their own business and uh, create content and oftentimes shutting themselves down to say, well, that's not that great of a video. That's not that great of an idea for blog post. And yes. And <laughs> it, it's, it's a, let it out, let it out there because you don't know whom it's going to touch, whom it's going to inspire and how it's going to inspire you for the next idea as well. So Maxine, thank you for, for being here. And may, may I just add one thing? Yes. Yes. George, it's about working with you and you've, You've enhanced that part of me because I came in not knowing anything about Facebook ads and live, and now I'm doing a live once a week. And, and you so encourage that lightness. Um, and I applaud you for that. It's, it's been, a, you've been very special in, in that part of my life. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. So, I'm so glad, so glad. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. So I will make sure to put your website and your information in the notes of the video. I hope those who are, who are watching this have been inspired, uplifted by Maxine's presence and wisdom. So reach out to her if you'd like to um, possibly hire her as a coach. I think she's fantastic. So um, yeah, reach out to her and what information will be there in the notes of the video. So Maxine, thank you, thank you again. And I uh, wish you continued uh, joy and um, creativity in your mm. process. So thanks, uh, Thank you for the opportunity to share. I really appreciate it.